Los Alamos National Laboratory for 34 years exploring energy production from conventional nuclear sources. And as you know, Los Alamos National Laboratory developed the first atomic bomb that was used on Nagasaki and Hiroshima in Japan. New ideas frequently come from outside of conventional science. I mean, I myself, uh, being a conventional scientist, look at things objectively, look at things in terms of the rules, and it's more difficult to think outside of that. Uh, the people who do that generally are people who are very unusual. On Keelinet, we get roughly 600 hits a day, and we get a lot of emails from people all around the world. That a lot of a lot of ideas, a lot of claims. There's something uh, uniquely beautiful about the the idea of perpetual motion and the people who pursue it, and uh, some of the ideas that Keelinet has been promoting for years uh, as a central clearinghouse for something like 15 years now. Uh, we study perpetual motion, alternative science, and uh, different aspects of what's called unorthodox science. Okay, put this here. Doug Compson is an alternative and some would say unorthodox here. scientist. Doug designs over-unity motors, that is, motors that put out more energy than it takes to run them, producing a perpetual flow of free energy. Let's see. <laughs> okay, go, go, go. Here. Oh, what we have here is a motor that can run continuously forever because you run it on one stack of batteries and you charge up another. So this is a combination motor generator. This is what I'm into now. You have a little motor right here. Now the way the motor works, it's a pulse motor. So what you're doing is you're um, turning it on, making this electromagnet have power so it pushes the magnet away. So what I'm doing here, if anybody wants to know the circuit, is I take the uh, battery, put it into the coil, and then be just before it gets to ground, I put a switch on it, so it turns on and off. And here's the switch right here. It's a magnetic reed switch. Uh, it's a switch that's controlled by a magnet going by it. This flame that happens inside this reed switch has a lot of power to it. It should have as much power in there going in as coming out, because every time that coil turns off, uh, every, all the energy contained in the coil comes kicking back. Now, you can take that energy that kicks back and put it into a second battery and charge up a second battery. So now, there's this flame here, and to make it vanish, conventional electric motor bills will just ground it out or something. But what you want to do is you want to put a full wave bridge rectifier. It's this component you can get at Radio Shack for $1.50. It changes AC into DC. Look at that baby go. Here's the battery being charged here. Watch the volts on it. See, look at this. 12.65 already. 12.66, see it's going up. And it's gonna go all the way up. It's gonna go all the way up to 14 if you want. So a few days ago, I ran this motor for uh, 50 hours. And I rocked the batteries forth. I switched them back and forth about three or four times. And at the end, I still had like 12 point something volts and I could have gone a lot longer. So what this is, is a, it's a motor, I call it an over unity motor, in that you don't, you're, you're using so much power and you're always charging up another thing. So you never, you always have a stack of batteries being charged when you run out of your batteries on the other side of the system. It's like the simplest thing in the world. And it's a motor, which means you can turn a generator with it. And now all the electricity the generator makes is free. Or you can turn a water pump with it or anything you want or a car you can stack these you can make 12 on a shaft if you want so that's a that's what I'm looking to have is like a commercial unit people could buy in a store something like this uh, just something that runs on car batteries charges car batteries and you have excess power with a generator to to do whatever you want with so it's free energy because <laughs> you don't have to pay for it it's it's just happening it's free all machines require some sort of fuel to operate. For example, the internal combustion engine in your car requires gasoline to detonate inside a cylinder, pushing a piston down through a connecting rod to a crankcase, through a transmission, to your wheels. Conventional science tells us that perpetual motion machines that would make all their energy out of nothing are simply impossible. 
But next time you fill your tank, it might be worth remembering that your car only uses 30% of the energy contained in the gas. 70% is lost to friction and heat. According to Doug Conson, a scaled-up version of one of his motors would not only power your car at over 100% efficiency, it would be pollution-free and need no fuel whatsoever. Is this a dangerous machine? For the oil companies, maybe? Can I kill me for this? The trouble with free energy is that it easily develops into an obsession. If you um, get very close with one device, but it just doesn't work, well, you're ready to try another one and then another one. So um, it can take over your entire life, getting closer and closer and failing, and getting closer and closer and failing again. But you know that um, immense success is just around the corner. You could have a house up on a mountaintop, living by yourself. You got anti gravity to fly you back into the city, generate all your electricity, make all your water directly from precipitation from the air, uh, clean, uh, take care of your waste products, generate all, all the power that you need, heating, air conditioning, cooking, everything from these little circuits. It's, it's, it's a world that people now, most people don't even think about, but, but we see it, it's like a utopia for us. The internet, working like the message drums of old, had begun beating out the news of Aldo's wheel around the world. The internet was hot with rumors that the great skeptic from America, Eric Krieg, had at last met his nemesis. And as long as the wheel keeps turning, the pressure on Eric Krieg will continue to mount. For every perpetual motion design, I see not just wishful thinking, but a misunderstanding of rules of science. These people don't understand the energy involved in simple reactions of combustion, light, magnets, wires, wheels, motion, and I see real science as hoping to set people straight and explain how these things really work. But the wheel keeps on turning. As a trained mechanic and self-taught mathematician, Aldo was fully aware of the laws of physics, but he claims to have broken through the battle against friction and gravity. He explained that the wheel was always heavier on one side than the other. On the end of the spokes, there are 256 movable weights. At the bottom of the wheel's arc, the green levers activate these individual mechanisms. Each weight in turn is pushed toward the center of the wheel, at the same time contracting the light springs inside the green plastic covers. Then, as the weights reach the top of the arc, a similar system is used to trip the springs, allowing the weights to be pushed back towards the perimeter of the wheel. Thus, the half of the wheel moving downwards is always heavier than the half moving upwards. And according to Aldo, the wheel must therefore turn forever. Perpetual motion is of course only one way of producing free energy. For centuries, magnetism has been a known but mysterious source of energy. Just imagine, if we had a technology, once you buy the machine, you never have to pay for energy again. Think of the phenomenal changes we would make. We're going to take 25 watts and run a 7,500 pound machine that I have built that you see in front of you here. That should be totally impossible by all conventional te technology. This is it now. Joe Newman claims that this machine, using no more power than is used to light a bedside lamp, will convert magnetic power into usable electricity, multiplying input to output by many thousands of times. At the same time, he says, it will also recharge its own batteries, making it free energy. I want you to see it goes negative more than it stays positive. It means the battery is being charged by the system. It's going to change your world in a most positive way. We'll be able to totally redo the Earth again for our children and our grandchildren. 
and we will travel even into outer space by electromagnetic energy. We should set up a manufacturing plant in every country in the world and make every country in the world energy independent of every other country in the world. I've always said this technology will do more to bring world peace than all the kings and queens and politicians who've ever lived. Let's see what kind of power we have on this shaft right here. I'll try to choke this down. You saw me pushing 900 pounds, 14 reps. That's one and three quarters horsepower 14 times. I should easily be able to choke down 24 mere watt input power. I'll try that and see if I can do it. There you can see that no matter how hard I try, you can't overcome that input of 24 watts. Oh, I'm sorry, but an inventor holding a shaft in his hands is hardly proper calibrated instrumentation. This demonstration is meaningless and har hardly the proper level of proof one would expect for such a claim. This machine is running from the gyroscopic particles coming from the atoms of this mass. Joe Newman has written a book in which he claims this form of energy, which requires converting magnetism into electricity, could supersede all others, including fossil fuels and nuclear power. From 1965 to 1975, I gave a unified mechanical field theory, mechanics explaining gravity, electricity, magnetism, inertia, wave and particle theory of light. None of those things ever had a mechanical explanation behind it. Not Einstein, not Faraday, not Tesla, not Edison. No one could explain one of them. I explained them all with the mechanical laws of a gyroscope. Joe was refused a patent on the basis that his machine simply didn't work, and that what he was claiming was a form of perpetual motion 